This video is going to look at adding a CSV file to a project in QGIS. So I have this CSV file that I downloaded from the NYC Open Data Portal. And a CSV file, when it comes down to it, it's basically just a spreadsheet. It's something that Excel, or in this case, LibreOffice will open, um, and it's a structure of data in columns and rows. And if you're trying to open a CSV in QGIS, it's helpful to look at it first and see what the coordinates look like. Um, you're going to need coordinates if you want to map the data. Um, so in this case, um, pretty quickly you can see that there is a latitude column and a longitude column and that will be useful when we're actually opening the file in QGIS. Going back to QGIS, um, you might be used to opening files in QGIS by just dragging and dropping them. I can try that now just to show you that it won't work with a CSV. Um, or rather, the CSV gets added, but no geometries show up. You can open the attribute table and see the spreadsheet there, essentially, but there's there are no features associated with these. Um, no mapped features, rather. So I'm going to remove that and add it the correct way. And in QGIS 3, the best thing to do in general is just go to Data Source Manager. Um, you can also go to Add Layer, Add Delimited Text Layer, but I think it's quicker just to go to Data Source Manager. It also has this nice hotkey, Control L. Um, so that opens up a dialog where you can add your data layers and you want to go under Delimited Text for CSVs. CSVs are comma separated values, so they're delimited by columns. And now I'm going to browse for that file I was just looking at. And <clears throat> in this dialog, you want to make sure before you do much of anything else that this sample data has rows and columns um, that match what you expect. If these didn't look like rows and columns, for example, sometimes all of the columns are smushed together, then QGIS is going to need a little bit more information about your file in order to read it. Um, in this case, QGIS does a pretty good job of recognizing that there are point coordinates. Um, if you don't see that area, it might be collapsed and you need to expand it by clicking on Geometry Definition. And we're just going to stick with the point coordinates for now. And for the X field, it's a little confusing. Um, X is going to be Longitude, and Y is going to be Latitude. And Q just does that for you. You might not have to change it, but it's good to keep an eye on it. So now, we are in latitude and longitude, as evidenced by the names of the columns, but also by the values. And it's worth double checking the values, make sure that they're in the range that you expect latitude and longitude to be in. If they were in some other projection, you would look under CRS here, and either pick that projection here, or if you didn't see it there, you can click Select CRS and search for it here and find the correct one. Hopefully, though, you're just up, you're just opening something in latitude and longitude. All you have to do is pick 4326 and click Add. And the dialog stays open in case you wanted to add other files. In this case, I'm good now. And if we open the attribute table, it should look exactly like before. Um, 
but the difference being that now um, these are tied to the points. So we have points with data behind them. Um, and I can bring in another file. I always recommend with a CSV having some other file open that you know is working. Uh, so here are the city council districts for New York City. I'll bring those under just to make sure that, yes, the data and the projection were loaded correctly. And that's all you generally need to know with CSVs. I'll open one more CSV in a different projection just so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to navigate to this one. And this, um, one way you know it's in projected coordinates is the field names are x coordinate and y coordinate. So they're not latitude and longitude. And if I find those numbers, you'll see x coordinate, y coordinate, they're very large. There's no way these could be latitude and longitude. Um, you'll see that the location is also here as latitude and longitude, but I'll stick with these x and y coordinates. Sometimes you will get data like this. Um, because it's New York City data, I know for sure that it's going to be in the local New York City projection. If you don't know that, look at wherever you downloaded it, um, or potentially if the file came zipped up, it might have a file um, in the zip file with the data that specifies what projection you're in. Um, in this case, I know it's 2263, New York, Long Island. And again, if I couldn't find it there, I can click that button and search 2263. Either of those will work fine. And I'll hit add like before. And we'll see these are the major felony incidents as opposed to the vehicle collisions. So just opened two CSV files using um, QGIS's data source manager. Hope that helps and have fun.